Kia ora koutou katoa. Welcome to the uh, Play, Recreation and Sports Committee meeting, the 14th of April. Uh, the meeting has been recorded live, so I'd ask those coming to speak, please uh, identify yourself. Health and safety, we have uh, fire exits around the place. If uh, in the case of an emergency, please leave via your nearest exit and meet at the clock tower. If a defibrillator is needed, it can be found on the ground floor um, at front of house. Uh, council building is uh, non-smoking, so uh, please ask if you're going to smoke. Disappear. Um, please pour any near misses to the administration staff. Thank you. First up on the agenda, <coughs> we have apologies. I have an apology from the Mayor. Are there any others? No, I'll look to move those apologies, seconded by Councillor Harpeter. <coughs> and I'll ask you to vote, please. One hundred percent. Additional items, I'm not aware of any. Declarations of interest. No. Public comment. Once again, I'm not aware of any. Brings us to item number five, presentation from Mount Jim Sport Incorporated. And I'd ask Kim Finn to come up, please. Thank you, Kim. Um, explain the traffic light system to you. You have 10 minutes. Um, away you go. Thank you. Thank you. So my name's Kim Finn. I'm the club manager at Manawatu Gym Sports, and I very much appreciate the opportunity today just to share a little bit about our club. I didn't bring anyone else with me. We have a massive competition this weekend, so they're back at the gym doing our real work. So just a little bit about our history. We were founded in 1976 as the YMCA in Grey Street. Then we moved to QEC School and then to Teachers College. At that point, we became Manawatu Gym Sports Incorporated. We moved from there to Downing Street, which was our first permanent home. So when we talk about a permanent home, that's where you're no longer pulling the gear out and putting it away, which some of you might remember from earlier days. Um, it, that will then reduce a lot of the wear and tear on the equipment um, and it also gives you the ability to have a lot more equipment. The, we have two sprung floors in our gym um, which are valued at $100,000 each and take a team of about eight people several hours to put together and take down. So you can understand the difficulties if you're not in a permanent home. At the end of 2017 our lease ended and we were in a bit of panic mode looking for a new building. The slide up at the moment is what our new building looked like when we first went to look at it. Um, unfortunately, we were pretty desperate and we could still see potential in this, so we decided to take the building on. This is what our building looks like now. So we've had a new roof, a new paint job, lights put in, we've also added garage carpeting and heat pumps. So it's actually a very cool facility and other clubs from around the country that come to visit us are impressed with how light it is and it's not dark and dingy. As a club we offer preschool classes, so we have a building block approach. We begin with a play gym explorers which is a casual soft play session for anyone under five. We run those five mornings a week. We move from that into a semi-structured preschool adventurers, preschool navigators which is coach led but still with parents on the floor into a fully coached uh, class. We've done that um, as a way to just get children into sport. Our play gym is a fabulous session and we have uh, around 300 kids a week uh, coming through that session. Um, it gives them a great opportunity to just be out in the community with a bit of active um, sport and a good introduction to gymnastics. 
Recreational gymnastics is, this is the mainstay that you'd all remember from school. It's your traditional vault, bar, beam, floor. So the bulk of gymnastics across New Zealand is recreational. We have a badge program uh, that is individual assessment, which enables everybody to take part. There's no pressure on anybody succeeding or not succeeding, and we're really careful to run a program that's engaging for everybody. We also offer tumbling classes for children who want to focus in that area, and we have trampoline classes that run at Freiburg. Uh, unfortunately, we can't fit the trampolines in our gym, and we have a ceiling height restriction. Um, across our four main areas of preschool, rec, tumbling and trampoline, we run 75 classes a week. We offer competitive gymnastics for boys and girls, and we've got strong numbers. We, have, we are seven children away from being the largest female club in New Zealand, which we'll have by term three. We run 44 competitive sessions a week, with our gymnasts training 600 hours a week between them. Our senior gymnasts train a minimum of 15 hours a week, which is actually light uh, by the rest of the country. We've worked really hard in all areas of our club. Notably in competitive, we now have gymnasts travelling from Levin and Wanganui because our program is so strong. We hold our own on the competitive podium nationally, but our club culture is one of providing gymnastics for all, so that's our focus. So we differ from a lot of clubs in New Zealand who have an elite focus. We focus on on everybody being able to take part. It's a, a, an essential part of our culture. Um, we also work very hard to keep our fees low in order to ensure that every child has the ability to come to gymnastics. And if we have someone come to us who's in a situation, we have lots of divorce situations or other family situations, we will make that work, um, including wiping fees. It's, it's not something that we're concerned about. A recent article in Stuff talked about sports such as the Wheat Bix Try pricing some children out. It's an area that we work really hard not to be doing. These are our numbers. So over the last six, seven years, we've worked really hard in the community, which you can see from our Term 1 numbers. So we've had an increase from 292 to we're now on 890, which is a substantial amount of growth. We've done this by running a quality program, moving into a better building. Also some of our park pop-ups, which have been really popular because they're just one-off participation that kids love. Um, we're now the fourth largest club in New Zealand and the clubs ahead of us are the two Auckland clubs and one in Christchurch. And one of the Auckland clubs is less than 100 ahead of us. And if we keep tracking how we are, we'll be ahead of them by term three. On our current program, we have 3,500 athletes a year, 5,800 play gym, 3,800 providers, 1,600 children come to birthday parties, 500 attend competitions, and 2,500 for holiday programs, which means that we're able to accommodate just under 17,500 sessions a year. Sorry. I've missed a slide somewhere. Um, I did have a, a slide with a photo of all our lovely coaches. So we've got a team of 28 coaches who are very passionate about our sport. We've kept them all fully employed during COVID. They're all police fitted, first aid trained, and all under training with Gymnastics New Zealand. So after telling you how, how wonderful our club is and showing you all these nice photos, you're probably wondering what it is that we're, we're trying to achieve. We're currently limited with occupancy, so we have a fire occupancy of 160. So once we take out spectators and coaches, we can only accommodate about 100 children. With equipment rotation, that's all that we can fit. Um, we've got every inch of our gym has been used with equipment. There's no room for anything else. We have a one to six ratio for five and six year olds and a one to seven for seven plus. So we physically can't fit any more children in the gym than what we can fit stations running. Our car park is a real hazard. Between 3.45 and 4.45, we might have 150 kids coming in and out the door, uh, which is causing us quite a bit of concern from a safety point of view. We've got a power box sitting in the middle of our gym, which limits visibility, makes it really hard 
to have complete usable space and we're restricted with our ceiling height because some of our gymnasts can actually hit the top of our roof in certain parts of the gym so we have to be really careful. This term alone we have only six spaces left for five and six year olds in our whole timetable that we can physically fit any more children in so we are turning children away, we're turning away school bookings and we're turning away preschool bookings who are wanting to come in during the day because our timetable is completely full. We are now going out into the community with schools and hopefully that'll help a little bit, but most of them want to still come to our gym at the end of their program and use a full setup, so we're unable to do that. Having our own building would allow us to invest more in our coaches, equipment, programs and resources, but importantly it means that we can maintain fees at a low cost, which we identify as a priority for our community. Uh, our current building size is smaller than Gymnastics New Zealand recommends for a catchment of 30,000. Their recommendation is just under 2,000 squares plus additional car parking. Um, this is not particularly good photos, but this is sort of what our car park in our building looks like at some of our, our peak times. Where do we need help? So we have 200,000 saved and we're continuing to actively work on that. We've got a strong committee and a strong fundraising team. What we have identified that we need help with is land. Um, if we're able to secure land, then we can begin a very active building project and start grant applications and a fundraising drive. So that's, that wraps that up and I just wanted to say thank you for the opportunity to present a little bit about our club. Thanks very much, Kim. Any questions, councillors? Councillor... Councillor Butt. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Lynn, for, the, for your presentation. Can I ask you, um, what is the highest achievement or highest level of achievement any of your athletes have achieved in terms of going to Olympics or National Games? Or We haven't had anyone go to the Olympics, but we have had them compete in the world's competition in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So we've had uh, two competitors make it to that, and we've had competitors who have won at the Nationals, which is the New Zealand Championship, but none that have made it to Commonwealth or Olympic Games. We possibly don't have, at this stage we're unable to provide a program for elite gymnasts because we don't have room for a pit. Um, so that's the biggest barrier that we currently have and one of the things that we would focus on with a new building is to have a pit. That would enable us to run a higher program. Uh, we've, we've worked more on our recreational side but our focus is now going to shift to competitive um, as we're able to, to run a bigger program. You need to build your base before you can build higher. But we have had gymnasts go to Hawaii to represent Thank New you. Zealand at the world. Thank you. Can I have one more quick question? Um, what about the coaches? You have high performing coaches available or? Yeah, we do. So we have got two senior qualified coaches um, and we have got two other coaches who will be senior qualified next year and they, they will continue with FIG uh, qualifications just to continue upskilling and going and observing. So we have the coaches available, um, which it takes time to get to, so it's a good thing to identify. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you, Kim, and um, thanks for your presentation and congratulations on the um, success. Your uh, numbers are really great. There's been massive growth there. Um, and the facility is is that you've currently got, I appreciate you're outgrowing it, but it is exceptional. I've spent a lot of time there with my two and three year old. Um, so just looking at, I guess you're here asking for support and you've identified um, some support with land. Are you looking to, um, I guess just to be really clear, to request some land from the council? And uh, have you got, um, I guess, criteria around location, size, those sorts of things um, uh, that have been identified or is, that, or is it more just the beginning of the conversation? It's the beginning of the conversation. Um, we'd need to do a pretty decent facility strategy plan but what we're looking for is something that would house a 2,000 square um, building plus around 70 car parks is about what we're looking for. Um, we often get asked if we can share facilities. 
we can't pack up is the first problem, and, and, it, and it's, it's not that we don't want to share, and it's not that we don't understand the financial restraints around not sharing. It just isn't possible. We also use our building from 9 in the morning to 9.30 at night, so we're, we're fully using it seven days a week. But we can share with other sports in terms of car park and toilet facilities, so there are possibilities of that as well. But, um, yes, what we're, we're essentially asking for is land. Okay. And at this stage, do you see any restrictions around... Um, location. Obviously, you've moved into an industrial building and yep. you've furnished that. So, um, preferably, we'd like to stick to if, if you sort of run to that side of the square, um, just because that's where the bulk of our people come from. But potentially, it's also where we would identify there's more issues around transport on that side of town. So our preference is to stick to anywhere around where we used to be, which is around the Tarkaro area, Cloverley area, or around the Roslyn area. So somewhere on that side of town. Where we are now is fantastic because we're getting a lot of the Calvin Grove fielding um, people. It seems to be a very convenient location. Um, and, and the people that we've got who come from the other side of town don't seem to mind the travel and it seems to work. So we don't really want to be in the centre of town. And then um, just a final question in regards to um, paying for a new build. How, uh, obviously, you are doing quite well with numbers and those sorts of things. Have you already got um, capital? Have you? We've got the 200000 which is not huge in terms of a build, but for a club, it's actually not too bad. We would intend to continue saving over the next five and a half years of our lease to have that to about a 500000 And then we would be looking at um, applying for grants for some of it and uh, looking at a mortgage. OK, so in terms of, of time frame, it's, this is sort five of Five and a half years, yeah. Right. OK, thank you, that's helpful. Thank you, Mr Chair. Councillor Harper. Thanks, Mr Chair. Thank you, Kim. I really appreciate you coming in. Um, as the Deputy Mayor said, fantastic growth in the sport. Thank you. Um, have you worked with um, Sport One or Two and discussed with Sport One or Two the regional facilities plan? Yes, uh, we have, and uh, Sport One or Two are hosting a meeting. We've already had one, and there's an additional meeting through the holidays where we'll be working through more of that. So, yeah, we definitely have. So you understand what the facilities plan is all about? Correct. Okay. Okay, that's probably my question. Thank you. Councillor Hancock. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mr Chair, and uh, thanks, Kim, for, uh, for coming in to uh, talk to us. And, uh, yeah, I also um, am very impressed with the, uh, the, the numbers growth within the, within the club. My, um, a lot of the questions which I have uh, have been answered, but just in terms of what's, what's the governance arrangement for the club? Uh, so we have a committee of 13 people, um, and, and they run our club, and then uh, so they take overall responsibility for... So we're an incorporated society, um, and they take overall governance role for our club, and then we have a management structure which is separate, which is myself as club manager and four head coaches. So we work together, uh, but the overriding structure is our our committee. We've got a very strong team. Um, we're also very lucky that our management structure and our committee get on, which sounds funny, but most clubs in New Zealand have a conflict, um, and we don't. So uh, that's partly why we've been able to do so well. Does that answer? Is that? Yeah, thank have you. I missed? Um, yes, yeah, sorry, just one, probably, and sorry, uh, question really is just so in terms of the makeup of the committee, in terms of project management and and managing that, like what what you obviously intend to do. Do you feel that like you've actually got the capacity and the skills within we've that We've got do that? the capacity within our team, um, but we've recently identified that I probably can't be part of a new building project and continue running a busy club. So at some point, we need to identify a team, and I do one or the other, not both. So we've identified that that's not going to work. Um, and But we've definitely got strong skills within our committee and good support from Sport Manawa too. So um, we may, at the beginning of those stages, identify that we do need a bit more help, um, but we're pretty good at identifying what we're not good at. Great. Uh, thanks very much, and uh, I wish you Thank luck. You. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr Chair. Councillor Batty. Thank you, Mr Chair, and thank you for your presentation, Kim. Uh, Kim, your current building, um, obviously a, a lot of money was spent on it to upgrade it. 
So was that fund raised by you, or was it done in conjunction with your landlord? That was conjunction with the landlord. So the garage carpeting, which was 30000 we paid for, um, and the heat pumps we paid for. So both of those were partially fundraised and partially grant applications. Um, we tend to fundraise around ten to 20000 a year, just depending on what we're trying to achieve. So when we... Um, got the new floor, which was the 100,000. We raised 30,000 of fundraising towards that and the rest was grant applications. So we were pretty strong on fundraising, but the landlord when we moved in was incredibly accommodating. So he was happy to put the new roof in and that was all part of the okay. arrangement for the eight year lease. Okay, thanks very much. Councillor Barrett. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks, Kim. Um, my first real insight into what happens with the gym sport in the area, so it's really great to hear and to hear how successful things are. Um, just trying to build a picture for myself of sort of what other clubs are either in the city or, or near the city that you would interact with and sort of how, how that club-to-club -club interaction works. So there is a club in Fielding that I used to run. Uh, it's pretty successful. Um, so when I left there, there was 250 gymnasts. They've got about 100 at the moment. Um, so we work closely with them. I still judge for them. Um, and, and I put my heart and soul into that club. So I still have a good connection with them. Um, a lot of their gymnasts now come to us because they need the better equipment. They're working out of a small piece of Manfield at the moment, which is not ideal, and that's not likely to change. So they're a great club, but they, they run at a, a more basic level than what we do. Um, the next closest club is Levin and Wanganui. So um, between the three of us, we form a province within Gymnastics New Zealand, so we work closely with them. But Wanganui are actually sending their gymnasts to us for competitive training because, again, what we're offering is better. So they've got girls but not a boys program. So we're getting all of their boys, and we work well with them. Great, thank you. And so then just to understand in terms of kids eventually feeding into your club, um, obviously attracting some from other districts, which is yeah. great, but sort of locally, is, it, is there programs or access within schools that then end up interacting yeah, into so you? Our play gym program is actually the biggest um, for getting children in. Uh, because when the children turn five, they only want to come to us because it's where they're comfortable and it's what they've enjoyed. We're now actively going out to schools in order to to have a um, more of a feed in. So we're working with them at the moment. We ran a program with Cloverly, Somerset and Tarkro a couple of years ago. So we managed to build there. We've done a schools program recently with Roslyn. And at the moment we're talking to uh, Central Normal and College Street. Great, thank you. Mr. Chair. Councillor Bellin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Kim, for coming in. Um, like many, you've got a look, historical connection yeah. with the club. My girls did competitive um, with you, and it, you do really great work. Uh, my question was about the trampoline arrangement with Freiburg. Um, is that something you, if you had a new building that could accommodate the trampoline, would you be looking to bring that in? Yeah, we definitely would. It's not ideal where we are at the moment. So um, the equipment at trampoline is ours. So we have, and, and they are fantastic. I Let me preface the answer with that. They're really good. They, they only charge us $150 a term. It's brilliant. But they use our equipment. So ultimately it gets damaged. Um, you know, we've got a trampoline class that's running professional classes when older school children jump on your equipment, it, it does tend to damage it. So um, it would be ideal for us to have that at our facility. It also limits that we don't have a trampoline for the 800 children at Malden Street, and it's not great. Um, as you know, the, the building ceiling height uh, would not work no. where we are. So the 2,000 squares that you're looking at, that would enable you mm. to accommodate trampoline Correct. Yep. as well, yep. with the appropriate... It's not just about yep. the square footage, it's no, about no, no. the volume No, 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 it's about, need. yeah, and it's about the layout. So the pillars that we have in the middle of the building are, uh, are definitely a hazard. Um, we've got them wrapped in padding and bright green, and um, but they are certainly a hazard, and they limit what you can and can't do. We ultimately would like to have a, a building where we can petition off our preschool area so that we can have a play gym group running and still have schools coming in, and that would enable us to do a lot more. Um, and we would then have a trampoline area, which would improve the skills for all of our children. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Um, I have a question that might be for you, Mr Chair, or through you two officers, about how we progress this conversation with gym sports. What will be our next steps to engage in this space? I presume uh, if you wanted to move a motion that 
the sea, look into the opportunity of land that Council has that we, or partnerships we could look at? Yep, okay. But then I'll, I'll write something down that we engage in a conversation with no predetermined outcome from that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Byrne. Uh, Councillor Johnson. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, thanks, Kim. Um, I was familiar with the Downing Street iteration of the club. Um, look, mine's a, perhaps a slightly more challenging question, which is that I know last year Gymnastics New Zealand had a review into training methods and other issues that have been raised about gymnastics. Um, would you like to comment from the perspective of your club about um, maybe any outcome from that or, or what your perspective is on that inquiry? Good question, and uh, honestly, I expected it uh, pretty straight off the bat. Um, so uh, I'll start with that one by saying we don't condone any of the, um, the treatment that's been in the media. So our athletes do not train when they're injured. They do not train uh, under stress or pressure. We've got no weight restrictions. Um, we don't apply any of those within our club. Now, so that's, that's easy for me to sit here and say that. Um, our kids are happy. Um, I have a lot of interaction with our children in the gym club. Uh, one thing that we do differently to other clubs is I'm not a competitive coach, I'm a recreational coach. So my attitude is very different to gymnastics from competitive coaches. Most clubs in New Zealand are run by their competitive head coach and that's where they go wrong. So they lose focus on the bigger picture and they lose the ability to look at why gymnastics is supposed to be available for all children. So we have a very different focus. Um, I also have a financial background and more of a sports admin background. So the combination of those things mean that I don't allow anything like that in our club and nobody would last more than two seconds as a coach in our club. I'm very strict on that and any of our coaches would be able to tell you that. But I spend considerable time every term talking to our our competitive kids, um, standing and watching what our coaches are doing so that I can be sure that what we're doing is fair and reasonable where that's concerned. All of our competitive gymnasts know that they can come to me at any time above their coach and they'll get listened to. Um, and, and same with our coaches. Um, we have a very strong team of very young, energetic coaches and none of them would stand by and watch something happen with another coach. We've also got cameras throughout our facility. So I can watch those from home if someone rings me with a concern. Um, and they're there for security. So if we have a coach late at night, they will ring me and say, can you watch me leave the building um, so that I'm safe? That's what they're there for. But if there was any other concern, we're able to play that footage back any time. So there's really nothing that can go wrong like that in our club. What I would say though is what was in the media was um, very much uh, made it sound like it happens throughout all of gymnastics. Um, and 95% of gymnastics in New Zealand is recreational. So 5% is competitive. Within your 5%, you're only talking about 1% of them are elite. That incident review is talking about that. Now, that, I'm not taking anything away from them, and I'm not making light of it. None of that should have happened, but it is not prevalent throughout the entire of gymnastics, and I, I think that wasn't made very clear in the, in the media. Um, Thank you for that, and I think um, it's good that you've got the opportunity to clarify yeah, a bit for Thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. That's exhausted questions. Um, I'd just like to say that um, I uh, really hear and feel your passion. Um, when I visited last week, it was actually um, really impressive, the, the work you're doing up there. Thank so you. Thank, thank really you very appreciate much. it. Thank you. Um, Councillors, I'll like to look to move the recommendation on the screen. The committee receives a presentation seconded by Councillor Harpeter. Um, any comments? Before we go any further, I'd just ask Julie, I think you want to make a comment on where we already sit with Gym Sports. Um, this is in response to the motion which is coming, sorry, so slightly preemptive strike. Um, just reminding councillors that um, the, sport, the regional sports facility plan has an investment decision making process that council has agreed to use in these, um, for these examples. So I mean, from a staff point of view, what we would expect to happen is Sport 102 and council staff to work together with gym sports 
um, and then we would bring back a report and if the if the um, recommendation at that point was that, you know, investigation for land and that there was support, then, then that would be a recommendation that would perhaps come at that point um, once it's gone through that process that, that councillors have agreed to. So. so the mover, are you happy to hold on that too? I don't think that's in conflict with what I'm proposing, okay. Mr Chair, and I think we would like to see that captured. Um, I would, that is what I was expecting, that as part of referring this to the CE, that there would be an engagement through the appropriate staff processes. So I, I don't see a conflict there, and it would be useful to make that the official record. So the motion's on the floor. Uh, does a mover wish to speak to the motion? No. Um, anybody else wish to speak? Councillor Naylor. Um, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, this is actually a question to the officer if that's okay. Um, just in terms of the comments that have been made about the regional facilities process, and I'm just interested to understand the timing of that process um, and whether that will, obviously there's a five and a half year um, time frame, but just to understand the timing of that and whether that will fit in with the um, needs of the gym club. Um, uh, well, it, as, you, as you know, um, Councillor, we've just worked, um, staff have, and Sport Manawatu have just been working on the, um, with Netball Manawatu, which came out reasonably recently, so we can be fairly responsive to this. I mean, I would, yeah, it's, it just depends a little bit on the sport and, and is led by them, I suppose. I mean, certainly we would be able to have a chat before five and a half years are up. Um, there is also um, the proposed um, indoor sports needs assessment in year three of the current um, proposed 10-year plan, which is also relevant to this discussion, um, but we would certainly begin working, and obviously work has already started um, within soon. Okay, that's great, thank you. Councillor Harbour. Thanks, Mr Chair. Um, I think Julie has said uh, basically what I was going to say was that we are getting requests from many codes across um, different sectors, and we do need to look at it in the overall span of all sport so we I do really appreciate this coming forward but I'm not sure if I will support this ahead of all of the other sports codes that are coming towards us so I do think that we should be looking at the regional sports plan as it's going to come forward from Sport 102 in our offices when it comes to us which looks at all of the needs across the whole of the city and the the region rather than just looking at one so that's that's all I wanted to say is that that's what the regional sports plan will look at which is looking at all of the the requests that are coming forward have been coming for the last six months to a year coming to us from left field. Councillor Johnson. Uh, thanks Mr Chair. Um, through you maybe a question to officers. Um, in terms of my understanding of what's required, it's land, and um, would this fit the criteria of being, of being able to lease, say, part of a recreation zone land? I, I don't know whether it would fit, because um, that isn't necessarily very costly for council. It's more a question of finding a site. Uh, the short answer is, Councillor, I don't know. That's why uh, we would do that work. Okay. Um, but I would note that we do have the um, community support policy coming shortly to, um, through Council, which will clarify some of those leasing arrangements and, and criteria to make it clearer for community groups and working with Council and applying to Council for support in those ways. So those, those things all kind of combine, I think, to provide Council back with some more useful information about how, how we could respond. Okay, so uh, we're not sure whether it fits that criteria yet, but we'll get an answer soon. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Mr Chair. Okay, so we'll take the recommendation that the uh, Play Recreation and Sports Committee receive the presentation from Jim Sports. We'll take that one first. I'll ask you to vote on that, please. And that is passed unanimously. We'll now ask you to vote on the recommendation, uh, sorry, on the motion. 
that the Chief Executive engage with Manor 2 Gym Sports to discuss their future needs and report back to the Play Recreation and Sports Committee. Can I ask you to vote on that, please? And that has passed 12 votes for, two against. Moves off to the next item on the agenda. Uh, the confirmation of minutes, page seven. Is there, uh, I'll move those minutes. Is there a seconder? Councillor Naylor. And ask if there's any comment. No, we'll move straight on, please vote. And that is past thirteen four. Abstention, I think. Brings to item number eight, uh, sorry, item number seven on the work schedule. Um, page 19 of the audit paper, the draft play policy. Thank you, Julie. Is there any questions, councillors? One moment. Okay. <laughs> oh, Julia, sorry. By special request, the shortest presentation in the world. Yes. <laughs> this is the whole thing, no. Um, kia ora koutou, councillors. Um, we were very happy to bring to you today um, the proposed adoption of the play policy. Um, I would like to acknowledge um, the the nationally leading work really that Emory has done in this space. Um, this is something that um, um, Ihi Aotearoa Sport New Zealand are um, really supporting and leading and um, are, they have acknowledged council, our particular council's role in um, pushing this work forward too. So it's, it's quite a difficult area to work in because it's so sort of amorphous. Um, and so um, we're really pleased that we've managed to, to bring this forward as the, as the policy that's here. Um, as you know, you heard a small number of submissions. Um, you could put the thingy. Is it this? Oh, is that? Um, sorry. <laughs> Just a comedy act this morning. Um, you've heard a small number of submissions, and we explained at the time that those came forward um, the, the reason for that. There was a COVID-related delay in the policy going out for consultation, um, and the nature of the submissions shows, I think, um, as I mentioned, that this is a very general policy because it's to do with changing the entire way that Council considers a lot of programmes and a lot of its um, delivery. Um, and so it's, it's a policy that we're very happy to um, propose for adoption and um, have made some changes. Those are all outlined in the policy, um, in, the po in the paper before you, um, but we are happy to answer questions on any of those if you'd like. Councillors, any questions? Councillor Hancock. Uh, thank you, um, Mr Chair. Um, just, just a couple of questions, uh, Julie. Um, just in terms of the implementation plan, which is actually mentioned in the policy, um, do, do you have any sort of um, uh, advice to give just in terms of the timelines that that would take to actually prepare that? I think that's something that we would get underway with fairly shortly, um, but it will, oh, it will involve um, all parts of council, so um, it'll take a little while, but we would, um, I think we've talked about reporting back annually, so um, once there's an implementation plan in place, then that first report will come back to committee. Okay, so, so just going on sort of the, um, on, on, on the papers, there was reference, I think, to uh, both shade audits and also amenities um, into high deprivation areas. Mm -hmm. Are those likely to be included into the implementation plan? Um, yes, so uh, the shade audit is something that's already 
um, undertaken and um, is able to be reported through committee if that's something that's asked for. Um, Brian is here, perhaps who can provide more information about that if you would like it. Um, it is also a, um, a measure of success that we've included in the proposed uh, healthy communities plan that's part of the 10 year plan. Um, and the um, audit is also a proposed action in, in the uh, active communities plan for, for going up for consultation um, as part of the 10 year plan. So both those things are actually actions that the council has um, proposed and asking the community about at the moment. Um, so, so from your perspective, there's actually no bar to reporting on that annually in terms of amenity no. as well as um, shade water? Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Mr Chair. No further questions. Julie, thank you. Oh, sorry, sorry there is. Sorry, Councillor Johnson. <laughs> Thanks, Mr Chair. Uh, thanks, Julie and Emery. Um, so my question's just around um, if we adopt this policy, um, there's quite a lot of um, under the guidelines about what we're going to do as a council. Um, are we at some point, and, and I guess this, if this is the case that will come with the implementation plan, are we going to have to look at budgets? Because if we're doing new stuff as a result of this policy, which I take it we will be, and I support that, um, at some point some budget needs to go in to support the doing of the new stuff. So how is that going to happen? I think it's a both end answer. So yes, there may well be new proposals that come forward, you know, during the course of the next however many years in terms of how this policy is implemented. But um, a large push of the policy is to do with how we go about doing the things that we're already committed to doing. So it's probably more going to be about um, considering play at the beginning of processes rather than at the end in terms, you know, a wide variety of activities across council, whether that's you know, it's not just active sport and recreation areas, it's also libraries and many other other ways um, that we provide services in the community. Um, so some of it is a different approach, I suppose, is what you're saying, that's that, right. um, to business as usual that's already budgeted for. And if there's any additional budget that will um, come through in the next few years? Yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Strong. Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks, Julie and Anne-Marie, for the um, excellent work on this. Um, just wanted to check in, um, reading through the, through the list of next steps there, um, all of which um, make, make quite good sense. It's um, bottom of page 25. But just wanted to also ask about, um, I guess, the wider community's awareness of this policy and, and what thinking is being done there, because we talk about uh, an internal promotion of the policy and we talk about publishing it on the website. Um, it seems to me that a lot of the value in this policy sits with community awareness of it and helping to reset community expectation around play in this city. So is there a, any intent around a wider community comms approach to the policy per se as opposed to downstream with implementation? Uh, through you, Mr Chair. Um, yes, I think we would. Um, try and profile the adoption of the policy, should that be the decision today. Um, and we're also um, just noting, turning around to um, Brad, we work closely with Sport One or Two, and they actually have a um, position within their organisation now, champion, championing play. Um, so yeah, I definitely see that, um, you know, that we will be, there's more emphasis placed in this area, so I think that, yeah, the, the policy will be um, given a little bit more profile externally as well as internally. Great, thank you. So is, is that, um, I guess given that it wasn't noted in next steps, is, is that something that's sort of just coming to mind now or I, I guess do you, do you feel that that's well enough in hand internally that you'll be able to get some profile in comms around this? I think, um, no it's not just coming to mind now. I think it is actually part of the policy itself as well to um, promote Council's approach to play. So I would imagine that the, um, the fact that we have a play policy, should you choose to adopt it, um, will be part of future communications um, in the way that um, services are developed and promoted and consulted on and all those things. So it would be part of our communications in the future anyway. Um, 
sometimes with these policies it's difficult to sort of promote their existence without a context because that's only so interesting to some people, um, <laughs> including even me. So um, it, it's got to hang off something. It's got to it's got to be connected to what people might want to respond to or see. However, you could see in the um, submissions that were made on the, the policy that the people who are interested and passionate about this area will be holding council to account on it. And so the fact that if, you know if we have a policy, then they will certainly be engaged with us and be saying, so your policy says this. Tell us how you are promoting that, how, how have you changed what you're doing, all those sorts of things, and that's something we would be really welcoming of. All right, thank you both. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair. Thank you, councillors. No more questions. The recommendation on the screen, that the council adopt the play policy 2021, Vihari Papioia Play Palmy Play, included as attachment one to the memorandum titled Draft Play Policy 2021, uh, deliberations and adoption presented to the Play, Recreation and Sports Committee on the 14th of April 2021. I'll look to move that. Is there a seconder? Councillor Naylor. And any comments? Councillor Naylor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to support this, um, the adoption of this policy. I think the um, engagement through the submission process was really constructive and brought up some really helpful suggestions. And I think officers have done a really good job in picking up those suggestions in the um, proposed changes to the policy. So I think what we have in front of us is, makes a lot of sense, and I look forward to seeing it adopted and put into place. Councillor Johnson. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Yes, also very happy to support and thank the officers for their work on it. And in particular, I think this is a very good example of how submissions have helped craft a policy. Um, I particularly like the way the officers have incorporated a lot of the suggestions that came through in submissions in the policy. And so just to draw attention to a couple, um, under, under nine, we've, we're adding comply with council's health-related policies. And so that includes the smoke-free and the shade policy, which um, I'm really pleased to see in there. And also number 10, uh, provide place spaces that are designed to engage people of different ages, stages and needs. And I think um, that's definitely widening the scope uh, in people's minds when they read the policy that this isn't just a policy directed towards children, but it's every age uh, and every stage and need. So, um, I'm very happy with the policy and I'm, I look forward to seeing the changes that it's going to bring to the city. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mr Chair. Yes, um, also very happy to support the um, recommendation in front of us for this policy. Um, similarly to Councillor Johnson, I really appreciated the approach we took in hearing submissions and taking those comments forward into the definition section particularly. And for me, um, the important changes there are in the definition of play itself and then in how we approach the concept of free play and recognising that's about no cost, but also about the unstructured nature um, of those play opportunities in the city. So I was really pleased to see that. Um, I'm also very pleased to see the focus on council's advocacy role in this space and I think that is really significant that council that we recognize that council does have an important part to play there in not just informing people about what facilities and opportunities are available but actually advocating for the use of those facilities and opportunities and I think this sets us in a good direction for doing that so thank you to the officers for their great work on this. Councillor Harper. Thanks, Mr Chair. Also very happy to see this and also happy to know that we've got a good partnership with Sport 102 to enable some of these things to happen, particularly in the play champion area, which they're already um, doing. And um, I think also the play street, I think that's a really, really good use in that area. And we're sort of seeing that happen with um, things like the street closures that we are doing with the um, George Street closure but also what we can see in neighbourhoods where they are doing more of that in neighbourhoods. So I think that's actually really what we are doing and seeing it happen. So it's really good to see. So well done to the officers and what they've done with the policy. Councillor Barrett. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and like others, um, absolutely fantastic to see this. I mean, who would ever vote against a play policy, right? I mean, it's, it's obviously the sort of thing um, we want to be encouraging in the community um, in terms of, of the, the social benefits, the health benefits, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so certainly we'll be enthusiastically um, endorsing this and, and really pleased to hear um, through officers' comments, um, you know, that, that our city's in, a, in, in the front of the pack in terms of New Zealand's um, response around um, taking um, a more um, structured approach in terms of, of supporting and promoting um, play um, through the community. Um, we'll say that the, um, the feedback uh, through the submission process did stir me to, to think of some um, further work that we might want to do in this space, so just to, to flag that there's a couple um, additional recommendations that I'd um, like to speak to once we've um, worked through um, this particular recommendation. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, um, I'll ask you all to vote on. It's passed 15-4, none against. And now it brings us to the recommendations from Councillor Barrett. In reference to the sun protection policy, 2010, the C report to Council on recent shade audit information and findings. With particular attention to the neighbourhood level, um, availability of shade in public places. And the second one, that the play policy annual implementation monitoring report includes specific information and amenities to play space with particular emphasis and equitable deliber sorry, distribution among neighbourhoods. It's moved by Councillor Barrett and seconded by Councillor Hancock. Any, oh, would you like to speak to it, sorry. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for taking us through um, the recommendations, as I alluded to in my earlier comment, um, I found some of the submissions quite useful in terms of prompting our thinking around um, some of um, our further work, I guess, in this space. Um, particularly, um, we often hear um, concerns raised about um, the availability of shade um, in play spaces, um, and we also hear um, concerns raised about um, other forms of amenity, um, drinking fountains, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm seeking to do with these two recommendations, and thank um, um, Councillor Hancock for his support um, in bringing these forward, um, is first to look at what we already have in hand, and, and the, the recommendation that refers to the sun protection policy, um, that policy identifies that we have been doing shade audits since um, 2010, and it would be useful, I think, just to, to have some insight at this council table of what those audits um, are finding, um, and particularly um, to see that from a neighborhood um, perspective to understand the distribution um, throughout the city and where we may be um, needing to, to focus more effort to um, make improvements over time. The second, uh, the recommendation that's numbered number three there um, is more looking forward and just seeking to um, give some certainty in terms of the reporting that will come back. And I think um, you will have heard the, the response to Councillor Hancock's question, um, which was, was that this sort of um, reporting was certainly within scope of that monitoring report. But just to ensure that we do have clear information coming through around um, the amenity features in play spaces and again, um, that we see a particular emphasis on um, the distribution of that um, amongst neighborhoods. I would very much hope that um, as we continue to develop and grow as a city that we see um, that the, the quality of your play spaces and the quality of your play experiences are not so neighborhood bound as, as they might be um, today. And I think having this as a useful base of information to continue that conversation um, would, would be quite helpful. So I would ask you to um, support um, both recommendations so that we get um, information back to council um, that is relevant to improving um, the distribution and quality of play facilities in the city. Council Johnson. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to make some comments in support of these uh, two additional recommendations. Um, in terms of the 
shade audit information, I think it would be useful uh, for us to receive that report. We know it's happening, um, but it would be helpful for it to be reported back to council because then that also um, makes it accessible to the public. And I think there is increasing concern uh, in the wider public about uh, our provision of shade. So it would be good to have that on the record, publicly available. So I'm very supportive of that. In terms of the um, emphasis on equitable distribution among neighbourhoods, um, I hear regularly from people in my neighbourhood that they don't think they get a fair crack of the whip. And um, I have to say, I have some sympathy for that position. Um, and uh, it's all very well to look at a city wide and say, well, we're doing this and we're doing that. But actually, I think uh, if many of us took a little drive through the neighbourhoods that we don't often visit or perhaps don't live in, um, we would find that um, the distribution of play spaces, the quality of play spaces, the amenity of play spaces is not uh, equitable whatsoever. Um, so I fully expect uh, that this um, implementation report will highlight that and then we'll be able to see some action uh, put in place um, because really there is a strong feeling out there that um, provision is not equitable at the moment and I think that that could be supported by the evidence. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Totally agree with you. Uh, Councillor Rutherford, uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr Chair. I'm happy to support both of these recommendations. I just want to clarify if the intention is, is that the report comes back to um, a committee or council, because the way the recommendation two is worded is, is that that's sending that report to council. It's a technicality, but I think we just need to clarify the committee. Uh, just to briefly clarify, um, yes, my, my intent with, with both would be that those would come back um, to this committee in the first um, instance. Councillor Naylor. Um, thank you. Just, I had a question around the second one, and I see that um, in the policy there is the intent to um, have that the play policy will be monitored and reported to council annually. And I was just interested to understand from officers in what form that reporting was intended to, to, uh, to occur and whether there were specific KPIs already in place for that reporting or if it was a specific um, report annually to this committee. Julie will come in. Uh, through you, Mr Chair. Um, I think this would be a specific report on the implementation of the play policy. Um, it's something that we'll need to think about how we do, because there are already, um, as Councillor Barrett's been alluding to, a number of measures in place in terms of the new proposed strategic direction. Um, I imagine some of those will help us provide a picture of implementation on the play policy, but there might be other things that we want to report um, in terms of case studies of activities that have been done differently or, um, you know, so it could be quite a sort of narrative report as well as just um, benchmarking some of those things that might be the first time they're reported, so it will be a stake in the ground to then, move, you know, compare back to in the future as well. Yeah, yeah thank, thanks for that. I guess my question wasn't so much around this specific recommendation but what the intent that officers had in terms of what's been included in the pay policy. I'm aware that the finance and audit um, reports have the KPI um, reporting already in place and I guess I wasn't sure if that was what had been intended or if there was a specific um, my only I, I'm, I'm supportive of the intent of this I guess I'm not wanting to overload with additional reports and if, if there's a way that we can put this in as business as usual then I'd be supportive of that but uh, through you Mr Chair I'm mean, totally up to councillors really I mean I guess we don't have policy-based reporting necessarily at the moment. Um, so um, I guess it, at this stage, councillors are expected a little bit to join the dots. Um, what this approach would do would be to gather the things that are relevant to the play policy, which you may also be hearing in other forums, um, either project by project or um, dashboard monitoring or whatever it is, and say, um, so how is this policy being implemented? So at this stage, I don't think it would necessarily be additional, a great deal of additional work. There will be some. 
but um, but hopefully it, it, it's about providing a play lens, I suppose, because that's the kind of policy this is, in the same way that sort of more more health-based policies might be. Thank you. That's helpful. helpful. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Happy to support both recommendations. Thank you. Um, Councillor Rutherford, would you like, uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor, would you like to explain what you're recommending here? I'm not recommending anything. I'm just advising for the next item for the work schedule that you'll have a few things to add on. Those to add on to it. Thank you. Got it. Okay. We have no further comment or questions. Um, uh, sorry, questions. Any comment? No, I'll ask you to vote. Thank you. That has passed 15 votes for, none against. Brings us to item number eight on the agenda, the work schedule on page 31. Is there any questions or comments on the work schedule? Um, we have advised that uh, the play policy um, implementation report be added to the work schedule, as well as the shade audit, um, information and findings, and And, and the investigation with Manitou Gym Sports be added to the work schedule. Uh, we'll wait them out to us. Yeah, they'll be added too. Any comments or questions on any? Oh. No. I'll ask you to vote on that, please. Oh, sorry, sorry. Can I have a, a mover and a seconder for the work schedule? Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor and Councillor Naylor, thank you. Now I ask you to vote. That brings us to the end of the uh, Play Recreation and Sports Committee meeting. Um, just to remind councillors that we have a uh, councillor briefing following in the council chambers. Um, so we'll take a, an adjournment and then be back for that at 10.15.